This is Debbie Somerville with the Office of Health Services. This slide program will overview protective measures that staff should follow if they must work. In order to protect ourselves and our colleagues, it's critical that we all follow a few basic principles to avoid spreading coronavirus. What we know about COVID-19 transmission. Person-to-person -person spread is the primary method for transmission of coronavirus between people. Being within six feet of an infected person who coughs or sneezes is sufficient for you to become infected. Research indicates that people are contagious before they become sick, possibly up to 48 hours before they develop signs of illness. It is possible to get sick by getting virus onto your hands, from an area that is touched with the germy hands of a person who is sick, or from an area that is coughed or sneezed upon, and then touching your mouth, face, or eyes with your contaminated hands. However, at this time, we do not think that most cases are spread this way. What we do know is that it is relatively easy to become infected. There are many factors involved in whether we get sick after exposure to germs. As many of you have heard, it is becoming apparent that people without symptoms can spread the virus, either in the period of time before they show symptoms or during an illness that they don't notice. How to protect yourself and others. The first principle is to assume everyone is contagious with novel coronavirus. This principle starts with you. Please alert your supervisor if you wake up and don't feel well. Do not show up to work if you have a fever or feel ill. Stay home if you are awaiting COVID test results, if you are under quarantine because of contact with a confirmed case, and of course, if you have an active case of COVID-19. If you feel sick, contact your healthcare provider to discuss your symptoms and the appropriate precautions. Although not all illnesses are from coronavirus infection, it's important to determine if you need to be tested. Most importantly, assume that you and everyone you meet will come down with the virus tomorrow. This will keep you alert and careful. The second principle for protecting ourselves is social distancing. Social distancing interrupts the spread of virus droplets from one person to another. While we know that the best method of social distancing is to stay home, there are ways to minimize risks when we are at home and in public settings. Before determining that a job function must be accomplished on site, Discuss the task with your supervisor to be sure that there are no safer alternatives. Stay six feet away from people. If you must come into contact with other persons, keep the time as short as possible. Avoiding groups of people is also protective. Reducing the number of people with whom you have contact also reduces your risk of infection. So, if you can complete a task alone, do so. During each day and week, try to keep the total number of people with whom you have contact as small as necessary. At home, staying in a small network is much safer than meeting with different folks each night, even if the groups are small. Being outdoors is also protective. Limit or avoid being in the building. Principle number three, wear a face covering. Cloth face coverings are a relatively new recommendation for protecting ourselves and others. Cloth face coverings limit the amount of germs that leave our mouth and nose and also reduce the distance a cough or sneeze might travel. A cloth face covering can be a homemade or store-bought mask, or it can also be something as unstructured as a scarf. The mask or scarf should cover your mouth and nose and should stay in place without requiring you to touch or adjust it regularly. Cloth face coverings will not prevent you from catching COVID-19 disease. Therefore, you must continue to observe social distancing. Be sure to wear a face covering when you are or likely to be in public. Always wear a face covering if you are within six feet of another person. Remember, people without symptoms are able to spread this disease. So, it's important that we all take reasonable steps 
like wearing face coverings, to protect our colleagues and people with whom we come into contact. The fourth principle for protecting yourself and others is thorough and regular hand washing. Hands should be washed when you arrive at your school or office, after using the bathroom, after coughing or sneezing each time, before touching your face, as soon as you arrive home. Enter your house and wash your hands. Soap and water is always best, but if it's not available, you can use a hand sanitizer as long as it contains at least 60% alcohol. Believe it or not, Use of gloves by lay people is not a recommended strategy. Use of gloves by lay persons is associated with increased risk because they don't wash their hands as often and may infect themselves or others with dirty gloves, and they may contaminate themselves putting gloves on and off. The fifth principle for protecting yourself is to follow basic hygiene practices. It's easy to say not to touch your face, but take steps to prevent doing it. Analyze the triggers that result in your wanting to touch your face, and then minimize those triggers. For example, tie your hair back so you don't brush it away from your eyes. If you do need to touch your face, maybe to scratch your lip, use a clean barrier, like a tissue. If at all possible, wash your hands before touching your face. If you sneeze, sneeze into a tissue and the tissue must be immediately thrown away, and then you must clean your hands. If you don't have a tissue, catch your cough or sneeze into your arm or sleeve. And remember, you still need to cover all coughs and sneezes, even if you're wearing a mask. When you open doors or touch things that many other people have touched, cover your hand with your sleeve or the bottom of your shirt. It will help reduce the number of germs on your hands. Keeping areas clean is also an important hygiene practice. Be sure that surfaces that are regularly touched are just as regularly cleaned and disinfected. It's also important that if you are about to touch a shared item like a copier, you wash or sanitize your hands first. This will minimize germs on shared surfaces. Staying safe is possible. It is possible to reduce the risk of anyone getting sick but staying safe requires all of us to follow these basic principles. Assuming everyone is contagious needs to become our new way of life. Right now, to protect ourselves and others, it's appropriate to assume you and everyone around you is contagious with the virus. Doing so will help you keep everyone safe. Social distancing is necessary to interrupt virus transmission. Staying more than six feet away from others and outside whenever possible will reduce the chance of inadvertently spreading infections. Wearing a face covering when you are within six feet of another person and whenever you are in a public setting, like a hallway, restroom, or shared space, will also reduce the chance of passing virus to others. Keeping your hands clean at all times and sanitizing them frequently prevents transmission of many illnesses. It will reduce colds and other viral illnesses that mimic the symptoms of COVID-19 infection, so you will worry less. And it also decreases the chance of infecting yourself with coronavirus. Be the clean freak your mother wanted you to be. Don't put your hands or fingers in your eyes, nose, or mouth. Cover your coughs and keep things clean. But most importantly, stay home if you are sick with a fever or have had contact with a person who may have COVID-19 disease. Staff from the Office of Health Services is available to consult with staff on how to apply these principles to their specific situation. You can reach us at the number on your screen or email me at the email address on your screen. Thank you and stay safe.